All right, so let's get started here. I'm going to show the cases that I have for my MCU movies, and then I'm going to go ahead and rank them. So, I got Blu-ray and a DVD for Captain America the First Avenger. I'll get to where that's ranked very shortly. Uh, same deal with Captain Marvel, Blu-ray and DVD. Same deal with Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk. Um, I'll show you this. This is cool. It's Tony Stark on the case. Iron Man armor on it. Honestly, very cool. Incredible Hulk Blu-ray DVD. Iron Man Two Blu-ray DVD. Thor, just the DVD on that one. Um, I have two cases for the Avengers. But I only have the the this one on uh, the Blu-ray for for this one. Uh, this one I got for a dollar. That was only the case itself. So that's uh I didn't have the case yet, but I had the movie case and credit card case um, when I was younger. Um, I got Iron Man three on um, dual format. Four as a Dark World. Winter Soldier, Blu-ray DVD. Both Guardians of the Galaxy movies, on um, just DVD. Avengers Age of Ultron, with the red Blu-ray case. These are less common, but starting to become more common. You'll see another one that's a slightly different red later on in this video, a couple times. Then we got Ant-Man, Blu-ray and DVD. Then Captain America Civil War. The Blu-ray, DVD, and 4K of Black Widow, because I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. Um, makes doesn't uh, since they explained that it takes place in between Infinity War and Civil War, it makes sense that she, that Natasha was alive. So I. I I really enjoyed that movie. Then we got just the DVD of Doctor Strange 1. We got Spider-Man Homecoming on Blu-ray, or on 4K and DVD. Uh, the Blu-ray wasn't included in that. Um, you'll see a Blu-ray pack for that later, that's a trilogy pack. Then I got Blu-ray DVD for Thor Ragnarok. The case underneath. Yeah. So underneath the slipcover is the same design. So, I don't need to show that off. Got Black Panther on DVD, Ant Man and the Wasp on DVD. Uh, some of these have my name on them because I've lent them out before. Um, then we got Avengers Infinity War on DVD and the blue and the 4K Steelbook. Ooh, Steelbook! And we got. Avengers Endgame on DVD and Blu-ray 4K. Uh, Far From Home on DVD and the 4K Blu-ray combo. Um, we got a Blu-ray combo pack for No Way Home and the 4K combo pack. Um, has a regular Blu-ray in there. And then here's that trilogy pack that I mentioned that has all the Tom Holland Spider-Mans on it in it. Um, got Shang-Chi, Legend of the Ten Rings DVD, and 4K Blu-ray, 4K combo pack. We have only the Blu-ray for Eternals. Wasn't a combo pack or anything. And then we have the DVD and the 4K combo pack for Multiverse of Madness. So, with all that shown, let's get into the, to the ranking. Um, let's see, let's start with the least favorite, like most popular YouTubers do. Um, let's see, in the bottom position, I put The Incredible Hulk. Not because I don't like The Incredible Hulk, but because uh, it has a different actor for Hulk than is in the rest of the MCU, uh, with Edward Norton instead of 
um, Mark Ruffalo. I would like to see a standalone Mark Ruffalo Hulk movie. I think that would be very cool. Um, yeah. So that's uh, in last place, followed by uh, the original Thor movie. Um, this one. Um, again, not that I don't like the original Thor movie, but it doesn't have as as big a stakes to it as some of the later movies in the collection do. Um, yeah. While I don't have it, I will be including Thor Love and Thunder in this, in this ranking, because I've seen it a couple times now. Um, moving on, we got um, in third to last place is Captain America the First Avenger. It's a pretty decent beginning to a, a series. Uh, well, to, to the MCU timeline. It, it is pretty good for being the start of the timeline. Um, one that I'm going to rank a little bit more generously for nostalgic purposes is Captain Marvel. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, let's see. Fourth, play, or fourth from last is the original Iron Man. It's a very good start for the MCU, for sure. It's a, it's a great start. Um, I from of the Iron Man trilogy, I like that one the best. Um, so I'm just going out of order here. Um, but yeah, I don't have anything against Iron Man one. I just I don't have anything against any of the MCUs, really. Like, there are some minor things that could have been better, but, you know, they worked with what they, the material they had at the time, and a lot of it is just delivery error, where they didn't deliver a line quite the way I thought they should. Um, and moving on up, we the next, uh, next up we got Iron Man 2, um, I, I do, I do really like Iron Man 2, number, uh, Iron Man 3 is in the bottom for my Iron Man trilogy, um, I like the direction they were going with Whiplash in this, but I don't think it, um, I don't think it, it lived up to the potential of the character. That's why it's a little lower on my ranking here. Um, already talked about the first Thor movie, I think. Uh, and then uh, in let's see, one, two, three, four, five. In sixth place is the original Avengers. It's been outdone by some of the other Avenger titles, so that's why I have this in the sixth. Or my sixth least favorite. So it's moving towards my favorite one, but it's still um, not in my top top roster. Um, in set, or is I'll just call it minus seventh. In minus seventh place is Iron Man three. Um, I liked how it showed. Tony going through his PTSD with the whole uh, Battle of New York stuff from the Avengers. Um, I thought they they played a little too much into the PTSD. Uh, if he had just if he had just like one fewer anxiety attack from it, it would have been all the better. It would have been much better for it. Um, then in, in minus eighth place is uh, Thor: The Dark World. Surprisingly influential on Endgame, by the way. Um, but it had kind of a, a less interesting villain. We'll just put it that way. Um, next up is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Again, I don't dislike this movie. I think it's a lot of fun. But I think it, they probably had a little too much fun. Um, 
fun stuff in here for the serious tone they were going for. Or, like, serious subject matter with discovering one's father, only to find out that he killed his mother, and that sort of stuff. Um, following that is the original Guardians of the Galaxy. This came out on my birthday in 2014, which I thought was really, really cool. A great way to spend spend a birthday with my mom, my best, and a couple of my my really good friends. Um, so there's that. Uh, following that one is Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Um, this one reintroduced Bucky as a bad guy initially, and he kind of had a little bit of a redemption when he pulled. Um, cap out of the, the um, the river or a lake or something. Pull him out of some body of water. There you go. So, I like I like stories that have redemption arcs in it like that. So, then um, next up is a toss up between Age of Ultron and Ant Man because I, I I place them the same in in minus tenth tenth place. Or ten place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 eight,
anyway. Then uh, Spider-Man Far From Home is is um near um I think we'd call that negative first place where it's um kind of like fourth place I guess fourth place is this uh, fifth and sixth place are Shang Chi and the Eternals. Um, then in second place, my second favorite MCU movie of, out of all of them, Captain Marvel. The reason Captain Marvel is in second place is because I like I liked No Way Home, but a lot more. But the reason I another reason I put this in second place is because I've got really nostalgic feelings for this because uh, if it weren't for going to see this movie in the theaters, I would never have met my biological father. So there's a lot of nostalgia for it in that respect. And so this movie introduced me to my biological father. So whenever someone else has a negative criticism against it, it's like, ooh, that hurt. So love, love, love Captain Marvel. Great movie. Great movie. Okay, I have to put some more of these away now. I'm trying to keep these in timeline order so I don't want to mix them up. Um, um, so in third place is the Multiverse of Madness. I do really enjoy Multiverse of Madness, but obviously No Way Home takes the cake with first place being being Spider-Man No Way Home. Woo! Love No Way Home. Brought all three modern Spider-Mans together in a fantastic way with some of the with some of my favorite villains from the other franchises. Oh, such a great, great movie. Oh, love it. Love it. And it's the first thing I saw when I got off my mission. That was PG-13. Because I was on a uh, no PG-13 um, I didn't watch those, and it was very sad. Um, okay. There you have my MCU ranking. Uh, what's your guys' ranking? My ranking is not necessarily the, the right ranking, it's just... My thoughts on the movies. I do like the Cinematic Universe Edition. I was surprised the Spider-Man 4Ks did not have a Cinematic Universe Edition on the, on the uh, packaging at all. I'll show you what I mean. Um, be right down here. No Cinematic Universe Edition. So, yeah. That was... That, I thought that was weird. Strange. Um, yeah. I said I would include Love, Thor Love and Thunder in my ranking, even though I didn't have it. It comes in 7th um, place overall. Um, not because there's anything wrong with it, per se. It's just it doesn't quite live up to my top 6. Um, and it doesn't live up to its predecessor with Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok was hilarious. I loved that movie so much. Um, but Thor Love and Thunder just didn't live up to it. It had a bunch of sad stuff about, um, I don't want to spoil things, but it had some sad stuff in there that, that was like, what, what direction are you trying to pull us? This, uh, I didn't, I didn't, um, didn't like the sad stuff that was in there. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I'm not going to say it. Um. <laughs> As far as the Disney Plus series are concerned, um, I'll do a separate ranking for those right now. Um, to recap what those are, we have WandaVision, Falcon the Winter Soldier, Loki, What If, um, Miss Marvel, uh, She-Hulk, uh, 
werewolf by by night. I feel like I'm forgetting some. Um, Moon Knight. Forgive me if I forget the other ones. I'm I'm blanking. Uh, I'll probably remember it while I'm while I'm ranking these. Um, so let's see. In last place, just because I'm not sure where it ties into the overarching MCU, is Moon Knight. Not that it's a bad show. It's not. It's got lots of, of good good action, lots of good um, character development. But it just, I don't know where it fits in in the, in the grand scheme of things. I know it's post-Endgame. But beyond that, I don't know. I don't know. Um, what If is going to be higher up on my ranking. But... Um, Werewolf by Midnight, I'm not a big horror fan, so I really enjoyed that one. I'm going to put that one in third place overall. So, let's see, I think there's been like eight MCU shows. So, in last place is Moon Knight. Uh, in seventh place, I'm going to put Miss Marvel, because uh, until the Marvels, Captain Marvel 2 comes out, it's going to be kind of hard to tell how it's going to impact the story going forward. Um, I'll get, go ahead and get my top three out of the way right now. In first place, WandaVision. In second place, Loki. And in third place, I thoroughly enjoyed that She-Hulk series. So I'm going to put She-Hulk in third place. Uh, what If is in fourth place, right there. Um, in fifth place, is Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, and then in sixth is um, shoot. I'm trying to remember what it was called. Um, shoot. I can't think of what number six was. Anyway. So that's my my T my MCU TV ranking. Um, what do you think of that ranking? What is the MCU show that I'm forgetting, or or are there only seven? Um, yeah, we've moved out of the Infinity Saga with I think No Way Home was technically the last Infinity Saga movie. So we, we're, we've moved into the multiverse saga, which also includes No Way Home. Because, uh, hello, multiverse ripped open right there. Um, I'm waiting to see the effect that Loki is going to have on the MCU, the this, this series. Not the character, although the character too. Because um, so far the, only, the other multiverse properties haven't drawn on Loki at all. With with the logic behind things or stuff like or you know stuff like that so it, it hasn't impacted anything yet it did introduce Kang the Conqueror I'm excited to see the direction they go with that in season two and beyond uh, with other movies and such because he's going to be a majorly big deal pretty soon um I'm looking forward to Wakanda forever I think it might be out now might be maybe i don't know i think it is or it will be soon but i'm looking forward to that um i've got kind of mixed expectations for it because in one of the most recent trailers i saw for it it said uh it just touched on t'challa dying like like uh it said something like like um uh what are we going to do now that, that King T'Challa is dead? And then it showed someone in a Black Panther glove. I think that's Shuri, his sister. Maybe. We'll see. Um, if it is Shuri, I hope they explain how T'Challa died. Even if it's just like in a flashback to his death. 
like what of someone killing him or, or him dying in battle or something going out like a warrior um i don't want them to have a missed opportunity with explaining how he died i don't want it to just be like like oh yeah t'challa's dead never go into why or how keep that in mind marvel studios we need to know these things um hopefully marvel studios executives are paying attention to my channel uh because i'm a huge fan of their content and it would mean a lot if they would pay attention to mine um yeah so until next time keep talking movies guys it's fun there's lots to cover i think i only have one 4k dc title no wait there are two i have two i have the 4k of the snyder cut as well as two different blu-ray copies because the 4k had a blu-ray in it or had blu-rays because there was two um and the dvd which also surprising was two i thought it would be three discs for dvd because dvds don't have that much storage space on them but then again they were able to fit all of in the game on one dvd so there's that um, as you saw when I opened the steelbook, I don't keep my discs in their cases. I have huge binders that I keep them in. So all of these are just empty cases. And every case I have, which is a lot, I need, I should probably get rid of some of my cases. Things that I know I'm never going to like lend out to people. I should, I should get rid of the cases. Um, but, um, I want to get all the MCU movies on triple format, Blu-ray, or DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K, and in my binders, that desire is reflected by having slots for the other formats. Um, but that is all for this episode, we're at almost, we're at, like, 27 and a half minutes here so i'm going to go ahead and stop it here and i'll we'll, uh, be coming at you again with a alien vs predator ranking but i think i'm going to save it for a 31 on 31 which means i have 10 days to figure out what else to rank with those movies because there's only like 12 things there so wish me luck on that and uh, tell your friends and family to check out my channel, subscribe if they like what I've what I the content I put out, and I'll uh, talk at you later.